What's going on everyone? Today is a fun one. I want to get into appetizer territory. I want to get into impressive territory, CJ. Oh, I was going to say but appetizer it, it, territory is kind of my it, territory, but also I, impressive. I can make, as well I can make appetizers territory. if you want to make appetizers. Sure. You don't, have, you don't have a monopoly on appetizers? Thing. You can do that. Ethan? It's totally my thing, but whatever. Who is this guy? Today I want to show you guys a fantastic steak appetizer. I don't want to just call it an appetizer. This is like a meal. Like I would probably eat three or four of these and be satisfied with dinner. Uh, it's succulent steak, a creamy horseradish sauce, a little arugula. It's just stunning. It's something you can take to a holiday party and be like the star of the show. It's pretty much what I'm trying to tell you. Well then do it. Go then. Wrong show. Let me show you how to do it. We're gonna start with one of my favorite ingredients, a gorgeous fatty ribeye. Now these are pretty thick and that's key for this dish because we want a nice medium rare at the end. So we're gonna hit these with a bit of olive oil and the black stone blackened. If you haven't seen this, it's full of flavor and that activated charcoal gives a stunning presentation at the end. Be sure to get both sides all over these things and be fairly generous. This is a thick steak. We want it to be a nice, I wasn't gonna say salty, it, you want it you want you want, you want it to be flavorful. Be generous. Now I've got my blackstone set to stun high high heat. Make sure it's smoking before you put your steaks down. Add a bit of oil and throw those steaks down. We want that maillard to happen as quickly as possible. That's the crust forming so that we maintain a nice medium rare on the inside. Now you can flip these as many times as you like. I don't think you need to flip too many times. Wait till the crust is exactly where you want it and the temperature of the doneness is exactly where you want it. You're looking at seven to ten minutes if you want it well done. Maybe don't make this dish. <laughs> it's fine. If you want well done, don't let people bully you. That's fine. Go a little bit longer. While those are cooking, let's get to our sauce. This is very, very simple. A no cook, no mess, no fuss, everything in a bowl. We're going to start with mayonnaise. Uh, right over the top of that, some grated Parmesan cheese, a little bit of prepared horseradish, some lemon juice. Uh, th these things together alone are fantastic. Like you could stop here and you'd be winning. But I want to go a little bit further. I'm using some Borzen. If you've never had it, it's easy. You just spoon it in there and it adds a ton of flavor. Uh, I'm also going to add a bit of salt and pepper and some water. Uh, don't go too heavy on the salt and pepper. We did add the Parmesan. That's a salty ingredient uh, so taste as you go so you don't over salt and the water is just going to help us get the consistency that we want we want this not quite a drizzle but we also don't want it to be as thick as mayonnaise so use the water to get the consistency that you like once the steaks are finished let's pull those bad gorgeous oh look at these things cj Money, bro. Woo, love looking at that pull them off and let them rest just a bit uh, we're going to cut up our baguette now let's do some nice bias slices that just means we're slicing it on the angle. It gives us a little bit more surface area and a slightly nicer presentation. You know, we can take the extra step to slice it on an angle just to make it look prettier. Now, get, uh, clean off your griddle. Make sure none of the leftover, anything burnt you want to get rid of. But we do want some of that beef fat. So pull the beef fat back into the middle. Ooh, bring it back in. See, we're toasting in beef fat. Yeah. We're not losing it. We're yeah. using it. Huh? Uh, Anyone? Uh? Toast that bread in the beef fat uh, on both sides. Now, you don't want to take this to a cracker. You still want a little uh, bite in the middle. So you want crispy be outside but still a soft inside. It'll be nicer for your guests later. Now pull all of those off, uh, slice your steak and it's time to build. Now I like the fat so as you're slicing if you don't want the fat you can cut it off and get rid of it so you just have the, the lean part of the ribeye. I'm a fan CJ I'm a fan of the fat. Dude, that's fat, that's, the that's flavor. Go, man. Fat is flavor uh, but once you slice it you can do with it what you like. I'm keeping the fat. Once you've thrown all of your bread on your blackstone cutting board, these new ones are awesome, by the way. They work as a, a platter, serving yeah, platter, or a cutting board. Really, really, really nice. Uh, let's add some arugula down to the bottom. Arugula is very peppery. Some would call it a savory green. It's got a lot more flavor than most lettuces, and it, it's really going to add a new dynamic to this dish. The flavor is, is fantastic. Uh, let's throw some of our steak over the top. You can do two pieces or one piece, depending on how big you cut your crostini. That's the fancy word for what we just did uh, with the bread, if you were wondering. Uh, if you're wondering. taking notes, pencil yeah. and paper out. Uh, now we're going to hit it with some of that creamy sauce. Now this, again, you want to be almost drizzle. I guess I would call this drizzle. Would you call it? It's a drizzle. Like drizzle. Yeah, it's just sexy and gorgeous and wonderful. So pour that over the steaks. You don't want to go too heavy. Uh, a little dabble, do you? As my good old buddy, Mr. Bruce Mitchell would say. Uh, we're going to garnish with a little bit of chopped 
chives. Now I like chives here mostly for their color and their size. If you went green onions, it's just a little too big. It starts to look like a baked potato, they're, right? They're harder to manage yeah. when it comes to a garnish. Chives are cute. Like this. Chives are cute. Add the chives. And the last thing I want to do is a little bit of balsamic glaze. Now we have tons of savory going on right now. The balsamic glaze is going to bring a bit of sweetness that your palate wants, and it's going to make the steak taste steakier uh -huh. and the sauce saucier. Sauce you knew where I was going. Yeah. Yep. It, the sweet balance to the savory is going to make this a really pleasant dish to eat. People are going to freak out and they're going to love it. Plus, it's gorgeous. Look at that, CJ. Dude, it looks Stunning. Amazing. I'm ready to get into this bad boy, bro. Dude, that's the one I was going to take. No, of course it is. So, here's the thing. Uh, I don't think this is beard friendly. Not eared. That is a strong not eared. But I'm going for it anyway. You got to go for it. Come on. And he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong show, Ethan. Get out of here. Dude. Yeah. It's amazing. How's that you sauce? know what? Everything is savory. The horseradish is really punching through with that fatty steak. That little bit of sweetness. That's what carries the flavor right on into... Flavor Town? No. Okay. Dang. So this is just a fun way of, of presenting a, a steak dish. Huh? I'm sorry. Huh? Excuse me? Hmm? Baking powder? Yeah. Yeah, we get it. It's good. Come on. I got nothing. Well, then wrap it up. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> That's why? That's why. All right, I'm a bit of a mess, but you know what? That's okay. This is one of those dishes. Serve napkins. Maybe serve them on little plates. If you take a platter like this to a party, don't quote me, or quote me, to be the star. Be the star of the show. Be the star of the show if I was there. I would love these. I do love these. That's I made better. these. That sauce could have used a little Worcestershire. You would. I did two yeah, lines from the yeah. same movie on okay. the wrong show. Exactly. Go see CJ's first cooking show for all those shenanigans. Check out Todd, Betty, uh, Matt Hussey. Go check out Good Groceries. Super fun uh, show. Um, Bruce. Chef and e. T. Chef and e. T. So many fun shows. But most importantly, be sure to show us what you guys are doing. I'd, I'd love to see your appetizer game. Like, what are you guys doing for, what are you taking to parties? Are you taking platters? Are you taking dips? What I are you doing for things. my show, basically, is what we would like to know. I want to see what you are going to do. I'll you want to do one? Yes, I will. Okay. I will. Okay. Will. Well, thank you guys again. This is Cook, Eat, Repeat, where we like to help you become a better cook one recipe at a time. I'm your host, Chef Nathan Lippy, and I'll see you all in the next video.